My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately, you're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1243. 1243, please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. The very first problem that you see there on the page is number 18. Number 18 says, number 18 we are told that y is less than negative x plus a and we are also told that y is greater than x plus b. So we have these two inequalities, we have these two inequalities and we are told that the solution to these two inequalities is the origin, 0, 0. In other words, both of these inequalities meet each other at the origin, which means the coordinates of this point, 0, 0 that is, to satisfy this inequality and that inequality. Let's substitute 0 for y less than 0 plus a. Negative 0, if you, if you want to think of negative 0, what, what exactly does negative 0 mean? Negative 0 is equal to 0. If you want to think about it like this, if you have negative 5, technically what it is is, technically what it is is negative 1 times 5, isn't it? Similarly, a negative 0 actually is simply negative 1 times a 0, but 0 times anything is 0. So this is just 0. So, we are told that that, uh, that A is greater than 0 and here if you plug in 0, 0 what we find is that 0 is greater than B or B is less than 0 or B is less than 0. What does it mean? That means that A must be positive because it's greater than 0 and B must be negative because it is less than 0 that we just arrived at. And that's what we need. Let me erase all of this thing. So here, A, A is greater than 0, which means A must be positive. B is less than 0, which means B must be negative. That's all it is, which means A is greater than B. And that's all we have to do here. A must be greater than B. Number 19. Number 19 is a word problem and in number 19 we are told that we have a food truck and it sells salads and drinks. A food truck that sells salads which, which we are told costs $6.50 each and drinks which we are told cost $2 each. We are further told that this truck sold a total of 209, 209 salads and drinks. That's our first equation. 209 must equal S plus D where S stands for number of salads that were sold and D stands for number of drinks that were sold. So we have the first equation here. But that's not enough because we have two unknowns here. Number of salads that were sold, number of drinks that were sold. We have two unknowns. We must have two equations. And not only two equations but two independent equations. So the second equation comes from the fact that we are told that the revenue on that day when they sold 209 salads and drink happened to be $836.50. That's our second equation. The only problem is that the second equation, the way it's written here in this form, it is of no, not much use to us. We must present it a little bit differently. $836 that they generated in revenue must equal the number of salads that they sold and each was sold for $650 which means 650 times S. 650 times S represents the number of money that we get from selling salads plus 2 times D which represents the number of amount of revenue that we generated by selling the drinks. We sold D drinks each for two dollars. This is the revenue that we generated from selling the salad. This revenue plus that revenue is the total revenue. That's our second equation. There we go. We have two independent equations. We have two unknowns. No problem at all. Question simply is how many salads were sold? How many salads were sold? So let's solve, let's solve this equation D in terms of S so we can put it in here. This equation when we solve it, this equation tells us that D must equal 209 minus S. 
bring the s to this side, d must equal 209 minus s, right here, we're going to put that in here, and off we go, 2 times d, which is 209 minus s, and here we have 650s, let's open this parenthesis, so we get 418 minus 2s, and here we have 650s, 650s minus 2s is going to give us 450s, and that has to equal plus 4, 418, mustn't forget that, must equal 836 times, 836.50. Let's pick this story, let's, let's pick up this story from the top, because we need the room. The very first thing that I'm going to do, I don't know about you, but the very first thing that I'm going to do is try to get rid of this decimal. This 50 that we see there, 50 cents, the entire thing is written in dollars. This entire equation is in dollars, so this is actually 836.5, 4.5, let's get rid of this 0.5, this 50 cents business, and we're going to do that by multiplying the entire equation by 2. Let's do that. Let's multiply this side by 2 and this side by 2 so that so that 50 cents 50 cents times 2 is going to give us a dollar 836 times 2 let's find out what 836 times 2 is 836 times 2 is going to give us 12 uh, 31 6 and 7 looks like 1672 which makes sense I don't know why I, d I have to do it, do it out 35 times 2 35 times 2 is 70, so for 36 times 2 must be 72, and then another dollar we multiply by 2, that's 73. Oh, so then we have to add one more dollar, it's going to be 1673. 836.5 times 2 is 1633, and on this side we have 4.5 times 2 is going to give us 9s plus 4, 418 times 2. 418 times 2, 18 times 2 is 36, so it's 836. Let's subtract 836 from both sides. So we end up with 9s is equal to 13 minus 6 would be 7, 6 minus 3 would be 3, and 16 minus 8 would be 8. There you go. 837 would we get here equals 9s. I'm going to erase now all of this bottom part here. We don't need it so that it doesn't get too crowded. Let's divide both sides by 9. How many 9 does 8 have? 8 has no 9's. That 8 goes and joins the 3, becomes 83, and 83 has 9 9's. 9 9's are 81. After we take away 81 from the 83, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins the 7, and becomes 27. And 27 has 3 9's. There you go. Since we divided this side by 9, we must divide that side by 9, which was the whole point. Hence, we must have sold 93 salads. We must have sold. 93 solids. Number 20. Number 20. Number 20 is on the next page. Here we are told that we are going to buy a laptop. A laptop which we are told happens to be on sale at 20% off. In other words, we are only going to pay 80% of the regular price. 80% of the regular price, let's call R, let's use R for the regular price, full price if you like, or full price if you like, F for the full price. So we're going to pay 80% of the full price because it is, a, it is at a discount at 20% off. We have further told that we paid P dollars, which includes, which includes 8% tax. Mustn't forget the sales tax, unless you happen to live in one of the fortunate state where there is no sales tax. Where I am, we do have to pay sales tax. Most states do. So, that's the, that's the question here. The question simply is, what is the full price? Given the fact that we paid P dollars total, which includes the 8% sales tax, question is, what is P in terms of F's? 
Let's find out, shall we? Maybe they're not using F, maybe they're using different letter here. No, that's it. It says, which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? The original price is what we're calling the full price. So let's find out, shall we? The full price must be, we paid 80%, 80% of the full price, which is F, plus 8% of this amount right here. This is 8%. So 80% of F is just 0.8, uh, 0.8F plus 8%, which is 0 0.08 times 0.8F. As you can see, 0.8F is common. This is times 1. Let's take 0.8F common. So here we are left with 1. And on this side we are left with, we took out 0.8F common. So we are just left with 0 0.08, which simply boils down to 1.08 and that is our this all of the, all of this thing all of this thing represents the amount that we paid which we are told that we paid three dollars when we walked out the store we had paid three dollars out of our pocket which includes the sales which includes the sales tax so this is equal to p this is equal to p we just have to solve for f in terms of p so f is simply going to be equal to p divided by 0.8 times 1.08 there we go that is the discount price being expressed in terms of or rather that is the full price being expressed in terms of the actual amount that we paid which is P dollars that was number 21 or that was number 20 let's take a look at number 21 let's take a look at number 21 Number 21 is a bit tricky one. Number 20 is a bit tricky. We'll just take our time. The question is asking, what are the odds? What are the odds that a person chosen at random, which is very important, person chosen at random from among those who had at least one dream belongs belongs to Group Y. Let me erase all of this thing here. Even though, even though the, even though you have the book in front of you, or at least I hope that you, that you do, I still write. I wrote down the entire thing on the blackboard, which I usually don't do because this is a tricky question. So let's see what the question is actually asking first. Let's make sure that we understand it before we try to solve it. The question is. We're going to pick one person at random. Question is, what are the odds that a person chosen at random from among those who had at least one dream happens to belong to group Y? This is what, what is known as the condition. We have to fulfill this condition from among those who had at least one dream. That's the condition. And such a probability is called conditional probability. It is not unconditional, it's conditional. We cannot just pick any person from group X and group Y. The person that we're going to pick at random must be one of those people who had at least one dream. And if you were to do that, if you were to pick one person at random from among that particular group, people having had one dream, the odds are, what question is, what are the odds that that person happens to belong to group Y? And here's what is given to us. Here's group X, group Y, zero dream, one to four dreams, and five five or more dreams 15 15 28 57 21 11 and 68 
So this is called, as I said before, conditional probability. What is the condition? The condition is that we must only pick from among those people who had at least one dream. There are 15 people in group X who had no dreams. There are 21 people in group Y who had no dreams. Those people do not belong to our pool. Those people do not belong to our pool. These are the people that we are dealing with. And this is how we write it. Conditional probability is that what are the odds of picking somebody given the fact, given the condition that they had at least one dream. Number of dreams that they had has to be greater than or equal to one. What are the odds what are the odds that the person that I pick at random happens to belong to group Y, happens to belong to group Y, given the fact that that person had had had, had at least one dream? This is what we're dealing with here. The people who had at least one dream are these people. 50, 28, 57, 11, and 68. Out of those people, how many of them group, belong to group Y? Question is, that, that's the question here. What's the odds that that person is going to belong to, belong to group Y? If I were to pick one among these people. Group Y is right here. Group Y has 11 plus 68. 11 plus 68. That's it, we're done. All we have to do is add up the top and the bottom. Top is very easy. 68 plus 10 would have been 78, so it's 79. 79, let's see what, what the bottom works out to be. Or can we do it? We can do it right here. We have 68, we have 11, we have 57, we have 28. Let's do it right here. Oh, that's very easy. This is 8, this is 8, and 7 plus 1 is 8, so 8, 3 is a 24. 8, 3 is a 24, 3, carry 2. Then we have 6 plus 2 is 8, and then there's another 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. If I did not make any error, in my work, which I did, because I come, the answer is 64. What did I do here? 8 plus 8 is 6. Oh, sorry. 8 plus 8. Oh, I just said 24 and I wrote down 23. 8 plus 8 is, we have one 8, we have another 8, and we have another third 8. We have three 8s, which is probably why I wrote down 3 by mistake. Three 8s are 24. Three 8s are 24. There we go. 24. The odds of picking such a person is 79 out of 164. The odds of picking a person who, who had at least one dream who happens to belong to group Y is this one right here. Number 22. Number 20 is, 22 is asking us what is the F approximate average approximate average change in budget from 2008 to 2010 for agricultural department again you have to have the book in front of you otherwise otherwise it makes it a little bit difficult to follow because I use too many abbreviation, I take too many shortcuts. I don't write down everything, you understand? Ag stands for agriculture. So here's here's what's given to us. We are given agriculture, we are given education, we are given general, we are given roads, we are given I should have written it a little bit higher, this is getting too low. Agriculture, education, general roads, human resources, and public safety. And again, if, since if you have the book in front of you, it makes it easier. And these are the years. 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 is actually 2010, you understand? 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. We're looking for agriculture, we're looking for the average change from 2008 to 2010. Let's look at the agriculture right here. Well, I left no room to put the anything. Oh God, I'm so bright. Oh, sometimes I wonder if Mama was lying when she told me that I was bright. So, for 2008 
we have 359 and for 2010 we have 488 there we go I'm just going to approximate it 488 488 I'm just going to pretend it's 490 and 359 is 360 it's alright it's okay we don't even precise so there we go so that's just uh, uh, looks like 100 and 9 minus 6 is 3 130 now, this, now the second pitfall here is that we have to understand how many years we are dealing with question here is what is the average change in budget from 2008 to 2010 from 2008 to 2010 how many years is that that's not 3 years we cannot simply count 2008, 2009, 2010 that's not how it works from 2008 to 2009 is 1 year and from 2009 to 2010 is other year. It's two years. It is 130 divided by two. The average change in the budget, the average change in the budget is simply 130 divided by two, which is 65. And that's our answer. Let's look at number 23. Number 23 is more involved. Number 23 is more involved. That's always the case when they give you pairs of questions. The second one is much more difficult than the first one. Now when I say difficult, I don't mean the math is difficult. It just requires more work. So in 23, the question is the ratio of which department which departments rather, apostrophe S, yes, budget from 2007 to 2010 the ratio of fish department's budget of 2007 to 2010 is approximately equal to the human resource department from 2007 to 2010 so we have to first figure out what's the ratio of the budget for the human resource department for 2007 and 2010 once we have that ratio then our job is to figure out that among the four answer choices, among the four departments that they give us, which is that one department which happens to have approximately the same ratio for its budget from year 2000, for, uh, for 2007 to 2010. Let's find out, shall we? Human resource right here, human resource 2007, there we go, 4000. I just have to make sure that I put in the right box, 4051. And this one happens to be 5921. There we go, you see? Precision is not required. You just have to get the approximate ratio, that's it. 5,921, 5, I'm going to approximate that. I'm just going to approximate that as 6,000. We're going to pretend that it's approximately 6,000. Same thing here, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that it's 4,000. That's, that's close enough. There we go. It's 6 to 4, which happens to be 2 third. Which happens to be 2 third. So now the question is, which of these four departments had the budget in 2007 and 2010 in such a way that the ratio happens to be also two-third. Let's look at them one by one. So keep in mind we're looking for two-third. Let's make a note here. We're looking for the ratio of two-third. I'm going to raise all of this thing because we need the room. So that we can start with A at the bottom, uh, at the top. In A we have agriculture. We just dealt with agriculture. 2007 to 2010. Let's see what we have for agriculture. 2007 plus 2008. 2007 that was 374, and in 2010 we already know we already know that it's 488. So it's 3, 374, which I'm going to pretend is 375 over 488, which I'm going to pretend is 490. The question is, the question is, is this is this ratio two third? Now I just change, I just change this 488 to 490, and I change my mind. I'm going to leave it at 488 in a second. I'm going to leave it again at 488, and you will see it in a second why I change my mind. I change my mind because all of a sudden I remember that we're looking for two third. Well, let's take a look at it. 488, 488. If you divide that by three, but or rather. Uh, Let's take a fourth of it. Let's take a fourth of that. Let's take a fourth of it. One, two, two. This is one quarter. This is one quarter of that amount. 
and if you multiply that by 3, we're going to get 6, 6, and 3, 366. In other words, 366 happens to be exactly 3 quarter of 488. As you can clearly see that this is 368 which represents 3 quarter of 488 and what we have there is 375. This is way more than 2 third. This is even more than this is even more than 3 quarters. But we're not interested in the fact that it is more than 3 quarter. What we're interested in the fact, what we're interested in is the simple fact that it's more than 2 third. This ratio is more than 2 third. As a matter of fact, this ratio is more than 3 quarters right here. Answer is not A. Let's look at B. In B we have education for 2007 and education and in 2010. Let's see what we have for education. For education we have 2164, 2164, there we go, 2164 and 3008, there you go, by golly. 2164, 2164, I'm just going to approximate that as 2000 and 3008, I'm just going to approximate that as 3000, voila. Two third, the ratio of the budget for education department for 2007 and 2010 happens to be about two third, which is what we're looking for. The answer is B. Now, just to satisfy your curiosity, I'm going to very quickly show you why C and do not C and D do not work, and also to see how to look for it. We don't actually have to calculate whether or not it's two third. We just have to understand whether it's less than two-thirds or more than two-thirds, that's all you have to figure out. This is roads. Roads for 2007 and roads 2010. And for roads we are told that it is 1464. I'm going to put 1464, I left no room. 1464, which I'm going to approximate that is 1500. Just to save time. And then bottom we have, here we have 1774. 1774, which I'm going to approximate that, this amount, as 1800. So the question is, is, is 15 18th about 2 third? Well, that's very easy to figure out. This is 18. You see, this is 18. We know, we know the third of 18, a third of 18 is 6. If third, if one third of 18 is 6, 2 third, of this amount has to be 12. Has to be 12. And this is way more than 12. This is 15. This is more than 2 third. This is more than 2 third. C is not the right answer. Let's look at D. What can we do D? What, what are we asking for D? Uh, let's do D right here. In D we are looking for public safety. In 2007 we had uh, 260 and this is 460 and again if you're looking at the book there you will see you will see that what I put down as 260 is being shown in the book as 263 thousand dollars 263 463 dollars we really don't have to be that precise it's a waste of time it's a waste of time similarly for 2010 it says 464,233 there is no need for this precision I rounded them to 460 and 260. Forget about the last three digits because we're looking for the ratio. That's all it matters. That's all it matters. So here's the public safety for 2007, public safety 2010 and the question simply is, is 26 over 460, is this approximately two-third? That's the question. Is this approximately two-third? Let's find out, shall we? Zeros are going to cancel out. And now what we have to understand is that this is 46. One third of 46, one third of 45 rather, is 15. We know that. There is no reason we have to write it out. You just think about it in this one second. I write it out just, just, for, just for your benefit. But just think about it. A third of 45 is 15. If a third of 45 is 15, two thirds will be 30. That's one thing. Second thing is that we don't have 45. We have 46, which means two-third of 46 has to be two-third of 46 has to be something more than 30 because two-third of 45 is 30 therefore two-third of 46 has to be something more than 30 do we have something more than 30 on the top? no, we only have 26 
So I don't know what it is. I don't know how much it is exactly. But we do know for a fact that whatever it is, 26 over 46, 26 over 40, whatever it is, is less than 2 thirds. Since it's less than 2 thirds, it's long. The answer is B, as we already established a long time ago. We're going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like me to help you get ready for the exam, I can help you with the math part. As I always tell you, math is not an issue, obviously. But I can also help you with the grammar portion, which is the writing part. And I can most certainly help you with the vocabulary part. And vocabulary is something you can do on your own. As I always remind you, watch the videos on my channel. Just type in a city vocabulary word day one. Watch the series. There are 100 videos. But if you wish to get hold of me, go to my website at kashwaniprep.com. Send me an email or fill out the form and we'll talk some more. Okay? Bye now.